Hello, my name is Jim Nyberg. I'm a principal instructor at Dunwoody College of Technology. Today's topic is dimensioning guidelines. And when students are just learning to create uh, sketches and technical drawings, uh, one of the problems that they have is where, where do they place the dimensions? And there are uh, actually dozens and dozens of guidelines uh, for placing dimensions and controlling uh, other uh, aspects of the drawing. And uh, today I've selected six guidelines that I feel are the most important for getting started right on, uh, in this process and uh, um, will help you in your dimensioning, not only on sketches, but in any CAD drawings that you create in SolidWorks or ProEngineer. And I think uh, as far as uh, the readability of a drawing, dimension placement has more effect on, on the readability than any other uh, aspect of, of the drawing. And so these are important for communicating between the designer and the people in manufacturing the design intent of the parts. And the drawing itself is not the final product, but the parts that are created from that drawing are the product, and you want those parts to be correct and work as you intended. And one of the best things you can do to help that process is, is uh, create drawings that uh, communicate well. And so what I'm going to do today is uh, go through these dimensioning guidelines and illustrate the guideline on the sketch. So I will be uh, adding dimensions and I'll, I'll be uh, probably erasing some mistakes and thing, intentional mistakes. And uh, so this might get a, a little messy, but uh, should, uh, it should help clarify these, these guidelines. The first guideline says, place the dimension on the view that best shows the shape of the feature. And this one uh, might seem obvious to, uh, to people, but uh, surprisingly, this is one of the most common mistakes on uh, beginners' sketches and drawings. And uh, what might seem obvious on this sketch also uh, on more complex drawings becomes a little more difficult. But if you can... Uh, uh, follow along with uh, what I'm doing here, uh, I might, uh, it should help clarify uh, that first guideline. So on this sketch, we have, uh, we have to dimension this feature. And this sketch consists of a, of a single part. I have a front view, a top view, and a right side view. And there's two places I can dimension this feature. It shows on the front view, and it also shows on the top view. And most, uh, most beginning students, uh, which kind of surprises me, but they, uh, they'll often do this. I'll put the dimension on that view. It's not technically incorrect, but it violates that first dimensioning guideline about placing that dimension on the view that shows, best shows the shape. The front view is, is often going to contain a lot of dimensions because if you select the front view carefully, it's going to show the profile of your part and show uh, a lot of the features uh, in profile. So following that guideline, what I would do is move that dimension to this view. So this is a better choice. This shows the shape much better than this. Up here, it's just a flat plane. Here, it's a, uh, it has more, more dimensional qualities. Dimensioning guideline number two says, place the dimension close to the feature being dimensioned. This is another one I feel is very important. And I'm going to illustrate that with this notched corner on this part. We have to dimension this uh, notch, and it's shown on the front view uh, with object lines. It's shown on the 
top view with a hidden line. It's shown on the right side view with a hidden line. Now, um, I'm going to include uh, with this uh, guideline, guideline number three, which says place dimensions between views when possible. I have to emphasize when possible because these two uh, can actually be in conflict. And uh, if I followed guideline number three, for example, and placed the dimensions between views, I would have to draw a long extension line across the part. This dimension does meet guideline number three, but it violates guideline number two. And uh, that's why I prefer to call these guidelines rather than rules, because rules uh, sort of imply that you can't violate uh, what's being said, whereas guidelines uh, suggest some flexibility. And so you do have to be flexible when you're doing this. These are uh, guidelines that um, are to help you in your placement, but there are times when, when you have to make compromises and trade-offs. So I prefer to always uh, uh, place the dimension close to the feature being dimensioned. I consider that guideline uh, more important than, than putting it between views. That's why it says when possible. So I'm going to get rid of this one without too much damage to the sketch there and put this So now I have two dimensions that are necessary, and they're both close to the uh, actual feature. That, so if this part's being machined, the, the machinist has both dimensions right, uh, right next to each other. It's much easier to read that print. Avoid dimensions to hidden lines. That's one reason I didn't even consider putting these dimensions on the other views where that feature is shown in hidden lines. Another feature that uh, I have to dimension on this sketch that's shown in hidden lines is the, is the hole that goes through the part. It's shown as a circle on the top view. It's shown as a pair of hidden lines with the center line on the front view and the right side view. Um, you know, in, in, uh, in 12 years of working in industry, I can only rem I remember having uh, only one drawing where I had a dimension to a hidden line. So that shows you, uh, again, uh, some of these uh, at times have to be uh, ignored, but most of the time they, uh, they make sense and, and uh, apply. So uh, most of the time you should be able to uh, avoid dimensioning to hidden lines. Now, I am, uh, to dimension this hole, will require two dimensions. Two dimensions to locate the hole and a third dimension to uh, give the size. So one, uh, one guideline that I don't have up here, but it applies, is uh, holes always require two locating dimensions and a size dimension. Now, notice I've been uh, putting the dimensions between views. Again, uh, I had a choice here of putting this, this dimension between the views or above the view. I chose uh, to put it between views because uh, it makes the drawing easier to read if you have a lot of dimensions inside the views. So there I had a choice and I applied uh, uh, guideline number three. Now guideline, uh, the next guideline number five is to include overall dimensions placed outside the views. Okay. Here we have uh, uh, 
an exception to this uh, guideline to put uh, dimensions between views. So every part, uh, especially a rectangular part like this, should have overall dimensions. And as much as possible, I like to include dimensions on the front view. There's the overall height. The overall length. And I can put the width uh, anywhere. I'll put it here. I shouldn't say anywhere. I have a choice of, of two views. Uh, and it's just kind of a... Uh, personal choice then where you put that. There's no advantage to here rather than here. So I have the three overall views and I also applied number six, the place the longer dimension outside the shorter dimension. So as you place dimensions on your, on your drawings, the, the shortest dimension should be the closest to the part and then as the dimensions increase in length, they move further out. And then the farthest out dimension would be the overall dimension. And so uh, you can see here that the shorter dimension is inside the, the longer dimension. So when you're, when you're working with uh, guidelines, I th the, remember the bottom line is always uh, when you're trying to decide uh, which, which guideline to apply. Uh, Clear communication is the bottom line. Always ask yourself which, which way is going to give me the clearest communication. And that should help you in, in deciding how to dimension your drawings and sketches. Thank you.